became a Hollywood star, signed her first record deal, and landed the lead role in one of the most successful teen sitcoms ever, all before her 18th birthday. If you've ever heard of the It Factor, Raven Simone possessed it right from birth. For many years though, the pressure of wanting to create the perfect image would cause her to not only be extremely protective of her personal life, but also hide who she really was. Raven Simone Christina Pearman was born in Atlanta, Georgia on December 10th, 1985. Right from the start, her parents believed their infant daughter had star power and initially got Raven work with a local modeling agency. Then they were able to secure her a major contract with famed New York agency Ford Models. This all happened before she turned two years old. Soon the family relocated to the Big Apple to boost her chances. There, the toddler appeared in numerous television commercials for major brands such as Cool Whip, Jell-O, Ritz Crackers, and Fisher Price. Her talents led to an audition for a part in the Bill Cosby movie, 1990's Ghost Dad. At the age of three though, she was considered too young for the role. Some may say it was fate that led to the audition in front of the veteran actor and comedian, since her father would later claim that his daughter liked to watch Keisha Knight Pulliam's character Rudy on The Cosby Show and say she wanted to be on the show too. I wear Simone, you know, like a bird? I A V E N S Y M O N E, and I'm years old. Raven's chance would come when Cosby gave her the role of his step granddaughter, Olivia making her debut in the premiere episode of the sixth season. Raven was an immediate hit and became a celebrity overnight. She remained a main cast member until the series finale in 1992. At the age of five, she became the youngest artist to date to sign a contract with MCA Records. During her time at the label, Missy Elliott served as her vocal coach. Her debut album, Here's to New Dreams, was released in 1993. It spawned two singles, that's What Little Girls Are Made Of, and Raven Is The Flavor. The former did make it onto the Billboard Hot 100, but the album overall was not successful. Due to low sales, she was quickly dropped from the label. One year after The Cosby Show ended, Raven got the role of Nicole Lee on the ABC sitcom Hanging With Mr. Cooper. Just like The Cosby Show, she was a hit with viewers, making her debut in the first episode of the show's second season and remained until the series finale in 1997. During her time on the show, she also scored her first role on the big screen in The Little Rascals. A bigger movie role came in 1998 when she appeared as Eddie Murphy's daughter in the box office hit Dr. Doolittle, and she also appeared in its sequel three years later. Not long after she got dropped by MCA, Raven and her father founded their own record label and released her second album, 1999's Undeniable. It only yielded one single, a cover of Stevie Wonder's With a Child's Heart, and unfortunately put up worse numbers than her debut. In 2001, Raven auditioned for a role on an upcoming series for the Disney Channel titled Absolutely Psychic, about a teenager with psychic abilities. She actually auditioned for a supporting character, but the network preferred to give her the lead role and changed the name of the show to That's So Raven. The series debuted in 2003 and ran for four seasons. It became responsible for many firsts for Disney Channel, including becoming the channel's highest rated and longest running series. Naturally, its success spawned a franchise, including soundtracks, dolls, episode DVDs, and video games. The show was also nominated for two Emmy Awards. When asked in a 2013 Vanity Fair interview what her understanding was of the industry as a young child and teenager, Raven was quite candid. As a very young child, I was taught that this was a job. This was my version of nine to five as was school. I had to show up. I had to be prepared no matter what because I could get fired and then things would go to hell. I was taught to always be on time, early, know my lines, smile. When someone wants to take a picture with you, always say yes and know that every part of my life will be scrutinized for the rest of my life. Raven's also done a bunch of voice work with her first long-running project being the voice of Kim Possible's best friend Monique on the animated series Kim Possible. She had a recurring role beginning in 2002 and was featured in all seasons of the show. She also participated in the two films for the series. In 2003, Raven starred as lead singer Galleria Garibaldi in The Cheetah Girls, a Disney Channel original movie about four city girls who dream of becoming superstars. The film also starred Adrian Bailone, Sabrina Bryan, and Keely Williams, and was the basis for another successful franchise. It attracted more than 6 million viewers opening night, 
making it Disney Channel's most watched movie at the time and highest rated Disney Channel broadcast of 2003. Fun fact, Raven once shared an apartment with Lindsay Lohan in LA after meeting on a fashion shoot. They even shared a 2003 Vanity Fair cover with a bunch of other teen stars. Raven told Us Weekly in 2008 that Lindsay was so busy working that she was barely around. She did pay her rent though, which is the most important thing, right? Raven refused to let the lackluster results of her first two albums deter her from continuing on, and that decision would pay off very well for her. She released her third studio album, This Is My Time, in 2004. The lead single, Backflip, got her some shine she hadn't had in a long time when it received heavy rotation on Disney Channel and premiered on BET. The project had moderately successful first week sales, making it her first album to enter the charts in the U.S. Raven then continued her role as Galleria in The Cheetah Girls 2. She also took on the extra task of executive producer. Once again, the film brought in more than 8 million viewers opening night, making it, at the time, Disney Channel's most watched movie and highest rated Disney Channel program of 2006. Two years later, The Cheetah Girls One World began production. This time around, however, Raven was nowhere to be found. She didn't return for this final film in the Cheetah Girls series. Years later, Raven admitted that she did feel excluded and ostracized from her co-stars during the making of the second movie. Reports have said that was possibly due to the other three having gone on tour together while Raven continued her solo career. Her self-titled fourth album was also released in 2008. It only produced one single and just barely made it onto the album's chart. Even though this is her last studio album to date, she has gone on to release several EPs. In the summer of 2013, Raven commented on the legalization of same-sex marriage, tweeting, I can finally get married. Yay, government. So proud of you. Later that day, she released the following statement through her representative that everyone considered to be her official coming out moment. I am very happy that gay marriage is opening up around the country and is being accepted. I was excited to hear today that more states legalize gay marriage. I, however, am not currently getting married, but it is great to know I can now, should I wish to. Later, Raven would admit that she felt comfortable making such a statement because at this time, she decided that she was gonna retire from the entertainment business and figured if she wasn't gonna be in the limelight anymore, she could finally be free. In an October 2014 interview with Oprah Winfrey, Raven explained why she doesn't like to be labeled as gay or African-American. She confirmed that she was in a relationship with her partner, who is a woman, but added that she didn't need a categorizing statement for it. I don't want to be labeled gay. I want to be labeled a human who loves humans. I'm tired of being labeled. I'm an American. Mm -hmm. I'm not an African American. I'm an American. Oh, girl, don't, don't set up the started. Twitter on fire. <laughs> Just as Oprah predicted, Raven got lit up all over social media for those comments. A couple of days later, she responded to the backlash by releasing a statement to the Grio. I never said I wasn't black. I want to make that very clear. I said I am not African American. I never expected my personal beliefs and comments to spark such emotion in people. I think it is only positive when we can openly discuss race and being labeled in America. In June 2015, Raven came out of retirement to officially join the ABC daytime talk show The View on a permanent basis after she guest hosted on the show multiple times earlier in the year. The stint didn't last very long since she was gone by the following year. A That's So Raven spinoff was announced by Raven right around the time of her departure from The View, which gave her the perfect out. Years later though, she'd reveal that she felt the show catfished her. She told media company Them that while she enjoyed her time on the show, she wouldn't ever co-host The View again. During her time on the show, Raven did take the opportunity to talk about other subject matter near and dear to her, namely her experience with body shaming. She disclosed that as far back as her days on The Cosby Show, she had to endure comments about her appearance. I remember not being able to have the bagel or anything at, we would call it crafty, where it's just a table of food ready for you to eat whatever you want. And I remember people would be like, you can't eat that, you're getting fat. Raven also broached another topic that had people quite heated. In a segment about judging people based on their names, Raven said she would never hire someone named Water Melandria. She claimed that it wasn't racist to judge people based on their names, but rather discriminatory, and proudly labeled herself as exactly that. The backlash was swift and severe. 
she attempted to apologize via her official Facebook account. As an equal opportunity employer, I have never discriminated against a name. Even though I said I would, it's not true. My comment was in poor taste. My lack of empathy towards name discrimination was uncalled for. The That's So Raven spinoff titled Raven's Home premiered in July 2017. In addition to starring in the show, Raven also executive produces. In June 2020, Raven married social media manager Miranda Mayday. Now being spoken for, Raven doesn't have to worry about how to interact with new people in the dating world. But she did reveal in an interview on Howie Mandel's podcast that she took maintaining her privacy seriously when she was. All of my relationships, especially obviously when I started dating, I had to get people to sign NDAs. It took me a while to wrap my head around it because it's very impersonal, but someone in our position needs to do that. And if you're wondering, yes, even her now wife had to sign one as well when they were dating. In January, Raven uploaded a TikTok letting the world know that after all these years, everyone's been pronouncing her name wrong. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Since her childhood stardom, fans have pronounced her name as you see it on your screen, Raven Simone. Apparently that's wrong and it should be Raven Simonier. Now, why she waited this long to correct people may forever be a mystery to many, including the ones who commented on the post. One person who garnered hundreds of likes summed up her confusion perfectly while referring to Raven's classic Disney Channel intro where she says her name the way we've known it to be. The whole time, I'm Raven Simone and you're watching Disney Channel. You could have said it right because how they gonna make you say your own name wrong? Anywho, today, Raven Simonier's happier and busier than ever. She was given the Icon Award in March at the 2023 Truth Awards. She's hosting a podcast with her wife called The Best Podcast Ever with Raven and Miranda and starring in the sixth season of Raven's Home. <laughs>